All right, so now we're going to take a look at the process for recording and playing back off of the SD card in the Aurora. All right, so what we want to do first is we're going to go into this menu called SD Record Setup here. Okay, what this is showing us is all of the different I.O. types you have in your Aurora. Now this is a particularly complicated one. This one has line, preamps, digital, and Pro Tools HD I.O. So there's a lot going on here. Yours will most likely be uh, much simpler than this. But when I hit the function key in this page, I go through those different types of I.O. So let's say that I want to record signals from the preamp input. So I move it down to preamp and then I use the rotary encoder to select the channels I want. Now, let's say that you want all of the channels of that type of I.O. So in this case, I want all four preamp channels to be recorded. A quick way to do that is you can use the select key, and that'll select all four at once. Okay? So right now, it's showing that the four preamp channels and the 16 line channels are all going to be recorded. So I wanted to point out in the top right corner here, um, it says 20 of 32 channels. And that bears a little explanation. So uh, when you record to the SD card, you are recording a single file that is multi-channel interleaved. So it'll be one WAV file that has 20 channels of audio within it, okay? And so those interleaved files can be different sizes. They can be two channels, four, 8, 16, or 32 channels wide. So when I've selected 20 channels to record, uh, it just basically says, okay, well that needs to go into a 32 channel container. But let's say that uh, we only want to do 16 channels. We get rid of the preamp. Now it says 16 of 16 channels, 16 channels of audio within a 16 channel container. So I bring that up because if you transfer to the, file, to the computer, uh, you may see that there's a lot more channels than you actually recorded, and that's why that is, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of there. So now to start recording, we just hit the record button on the front panel. Now in the display, there's some useful information here. So at the very top, it tells you what sample rate you're recording at, what the sync source is. Down below, it tells you what the session name is you're recording into, and beneath that, which take you're recording into. Now there's two counters beneath that. The top counter is telling you how far into the take you have recorded, and the bottom counter is telling you how far from the end of the SD card you are. So that helps you know if you're gonna run out of space before the end of the take or something to make uh, preparations for that. Okay, so while recording is happening, one of the things that happens automatically is that the input signals redirect to the output for monitoring automatically. Okay, you don't have to set anything up for that. If you want to monitor through the headphones, that you do have to set up as to what sources you want to listen to. Um, okay, and while recording is happening, a good practice is to go to this page, which is called SD card. If we select that, this gives us a lot of information about what's on the SD card, its capacity, how it's formatted, etc. The main thing I want to call attention to, though, is in the second column, second line from the bottom, it says here 93 of 100. This is a score that we're giving to the SD card for these current recording conditions. So 93 of 100 is excellent. Um, 80s, 70s, all of that is perfectly fine. If you're getting 50s or 40s, that's not so great. Uh, the way you would remedy that um, so you get a better score is either less channels, a lower sample rate, or a better quality SD card. If the score is too low, you have potential for a dropout. So it's just a way of warning you if the conditions are flying um, for the recording you're doing. Okay, so we'll go out of there. Now to stop the recording, just hit the record button again. And now in this state, it's ready to start playing. So if we want to play the recording we just did, just hit play. And now over on the left-hand side, the counters are showing us how far from the beginning of the recording, and it's incrementing down from the end of that take that we've recorded into, okay? So now in this state, let's say we wanna go to a, a different take that we already did. Just put it into pause. You can use the arrow keys to go down to a different take and now hit play to play that one. Um, let's say you have a long take and you wanna go a little bit into it, you know, a couple minutes into it and, uh, and check something out. You can put it into pause and then use the rotary encoder to increment into that file a little bit, okay? All right, so one other thing I wanna show you before we leave this is that we looked at the session page and how you can uh, hide session names. You can do the same things to takes. So let's say that take that we just recorded was terrible and we, we, 
We're not deleting it, we just wanna hide it so we're not tempted to even play it. We want it out of the playlist. So what you do, go into the sessions page, we're gonna highlight that session that we just did and press the rotary encoder. And now this last take is the one that we recorded. Uh, if I hit the function key, I can go to that minus icon, hit select, it'll ask for confirmation. And now that terrible take is nuked. Um, if we keep recording now, it's just gonna keep incrementing up. The take numbers are gonna keep going up, all organized within your session folder. And that's basically all there is to it.